Oh, Jesus. S&P 500 program trade by level one. You make a call, pal. Go to work. Okay, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. I'm recording this one as both a podcast and a video. If you're in the podcast camp, I will be referring to screenshots here in the video. Uh, I'll be putting those on my podcast site, uh, bowerpost.com. Just go there, find this uh, podcast, and you'll see the pretty pictures beneath the podcast thingy. All right, let's get on with it. So today we're going to look at trading crude oil. Well, not exactly. We're going to look at some strategies around trading and we're going to use crude oil as an example because it's a great market to look at these kind of strategies. Uh, we're going to have a look at, um, first up, we're going to have a look at uh, future, trading futures in crude oil versus trading CFDs in crude oil. Uh, and then we're gonna have a look at a very simple futures spread. If you've never heard of futures spreads before, that's cool, we'll go into that. And we're going to have a look at a complex futures spread, a scary, scary complex futures spread. Not really, it's actually going to be a heck of a lot simpler than you think, uh, and I'll show you why. And we're going to look at the, the risk of trading these kind of spreads, and we're going to look at the consistency, essentially uh, the why do it uh, kind of thing. So we'll look at that a little later on. First up, let's have a look at CFDs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I don't trade them and don't like them. Uh, essentially a CFD is an over-the-counter product, an OTC product as they call it, which means when you're trading a CFD, you're trading directly with a broker. They issue the product, they make the market, they make the prices in the product. And here's a snapshot that I picked up from a CFD website just this morning. This shows uh, crude oil, their product of crude oil. Essentially all you can do with a crude oil CFD is buy it or sell it. There's no complexity, there's no depth of strategies you can implement. You can buy it, sell it, or you can do nothing. Uh, and in this particular instance it shows, which I think is a little bit misleading, it shows a chart that says crude oil futures chart, which kind of to me implies that you're trading futures, but you're not. When you have a CFD account, you're trading a CFD. A C in this instance, it would be a CFD on futures, not an actual futures account. So as I said, a CFD is an over-the-counter, a broker-issued product. They issue the product. They guarantee the product. They make the market. They make the prices. They call the shots, essentially. So you can see here, check it out. They've got the buy price and the sell price on the left here, which is $0.09 cents apart. Uh, Normally in crude oil futures, you, you're one cent apart. So you, when they say you don't pay commission, yeah, you do. There it is right there. Nine times the price uh, of what you pay in futures. Futures are a little different because the commissions are clear, cleanly disclosed. You pay a, 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 a dollar or a cent price per contract. Uh, so it's a little bit more transparent there. But what, what you also get, <clears throat> pardon me, with CFDs is there's just one price for crude oil, whereas, let's have a look at futures. Here, this is a list, a table that I just took a snapshot from the CME Chicago Mercantile Exchange, cmegroup.com, that took, took that snapshot from their website this morning, and it shows some of the futures prices available for crude oil. Now, crude oil has monthly expiries, which, which means uh, there's a price for, it's now November, there's a price for December, there's a price for crude in January, there's a price for crude in February, March, April, May, and so on and so on and so on. I think it goes out 10 or 15 years or something like that. But the, the guts of the trading all occurs within the first six, eight, nine months, something like that. But what that does, uh, and why this is important, because it means we can take a wider range of clever and well-researched strategies, uh, more than just your regular buy and sells. It means we can take different risks. We can take lower risks than just a regular buy or regular sell or regular short, I should say. Uh, it means yeah, with less risk, you can go ahead and invest less. It, mean, it means you can hold trades longer. If you've ever been in a trade where you've put a, you've entered the market, you put your stop in, you've seen the market, bang, 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 hit your stop and then take off in the direction you intended it to. Uh, if you've ever had that feeling of disillusionment or pissed offedness, uh, you're not alone, that happens. But with spreads, you can work out strategies where the, 
the strategy is a little bit more forgiving because of the changing in the nature of the risk. And I'll show you a couple of those strategies in a second. So before, before we do, before we get into examples, I just want to cover off what a spread is. Okay, so you may have, you may have heard of the term from a buy sell spread point of view. That's, that means the difference between the buy price and the sell price. Back there, let's go over and have a look at that CFD again. The, the buy sell spread here is about nine cents. Okay, uh, that's not what we're talking about here when we talk about spreads. We're talking about, when we talk future spreads, we're talking about the price difference between one contract and one or more other contracts. So you've got a list here, we've got a list here December through to September of crude oil prices for each of them. A spread is the difference, a spread price is the difference between any one of those two, for example. So the goal of spread trading uh, is to essentially profit from the change in the price differential not the change in crude oil overall and it's also you know goal of spread trading is to offer you different risks again we'll get into that um, so here's an example of a spread trade you can see i've got some pretty colored arrows marked next to may and june and the chart there shows the spread price the spread differential between the may and june contracts there's terms now in futures bull spread and bear spread a bull spread is when you are buying the near contract and selling the far and a bear spread believe it or not is when you sell the near contract and buy the far in this example i'm going to have a look at the may versus june spread may is trading at the moment 39 35 39 dollars and 35 cents uh, and june is trading about 30 cents above that a spread price therefore is may minus june which will be minus 30 32 cents okay that's about where the market is for that spread so just like you can buy futures and hope they go up or go short futures and hope they go down you can buy the spread or sell the spread with a view of that spread price differential changing so a bull spread uh, means when you're buying near selling far bear spread selling near buying far Kind of makes sense because in most instances the spread price would be somewhat correlated to the underlying price that is if we see crude oil go up 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 we'll see the price differential also go up okay in fact this is a great example uh, you can see in this table here the previous trading session may futures lost a dollar 17 in that particular day and you can see that the spread price also lost money but there's a difference in risk too you can say okay so a dollar 17 uh in the futures is worth 1170 dollars per single con contract here in the spread it looks like we've gone from about 29 cents to down to neg 32 neg 30 neg 32 so it's only lost a couple of cents so it has that lower volatility okay so that gives you, as I said, that gives you a, a more scope to either risk less, trade more, spread your trades over different spreads, that kind of thing. Uh, in fact, let's take a look at that risk in not just looking at the end of day prices there, but so here, here I have a chart of May crude and June crude. I use a, the a, average true range, the ATR to measure risk and volatility. Uh, it's an indicator that's available on pretty much every single charting package out there. It essentially shows you the average range for a particular session. And we're looking at daily charts here. So it's the average trade range for a day. Currently, the May contract is $1.59 average true range. And the June is $1.61, pretty much the same. Now, in, in dollar um, points, in dollar values, that sh I should say, that is about 1600 bucks for each of them. So that tells you how volatile the contract is, how you could say how much you expect uh, out of the market on any particular day uh, in terms of volatility, about $1,600 in volatility. Compare that to that spread price. Here we have a chart of the spread. The average true range is five cents, not $1.60, but five cents, one thirty second of the amount. So that's about $50 a day. So current volatility for that spread is $50 a day. Now, as implied by that spread that ATR chart it does change 
Uh, and particularly as you get closer to expiration, things can get a little bit more volatile uh, in something like crude oil or, or, or other spread markets. But um, right now, as it stands, $50 a day risk versus $1,600 a day risk, quite different. So that's one of the attractive features for a lot of people learning to trade spreads. They say, well, I don't have to risk as much when I do this. Uh, and for the most part, that's right. But look, there are always extreme circumstances, but that, you know, if there's an extreme circumstance in a spread that tends to be the same in the, um, in the underlying market too. Okay, so um, you don't wake up one day and May's gone up six dollars and and, uh, and June's gone down ten. You know, that tends not to happen. Uh, things like that can happen in theory, and we saw some craziness uh, most recently when the price for crude went negative right on expiry day. Uh, but um, for the most part, those things are so rare in happening, uh, and with some sound uh, education and, and risk management principles, it won't happen to your account either. So um, what I've done with this spread, I want to take, I want to go a little bit deeper into this May, June spread and show you some of the research we can do uh, and, and therefore look at this trade as uh, a more viable thing. As I said, with uh, CFDs, you can buy it if you think it's going up, sell it if you think it's going down. We can dig deeper with spreads and get some more consistent um, research, consistent numbers to give us a bit more confidence in taking a trade. So here, what I've got, this chart on the right shows the little black line there is our spread price, uh, trading about neg 30, you can see that there, um, uh, 30 cents. And the um, the red and the blue lines are the exciting ones, really interesting um, way to look at things. This takes the, that same spread, which is May versus June, and it takes the average for how that spread has performed over five years and 15 years. All right. So what it's done is say for the five year one, it's taken the May, June contract from last year and the four years before that made an average and shown you how that spread has behaved from now up until, uh, what's that say, May next year. Now it's done the same for the 15 years as well. And what I like about this is that there's a clear and defined trend and there's some clear consistency here. In fact, I've gone ahead and optimized uh, some trades here and searched for some trades here. And you can see where I've put the red line and where I've put the green, or the red arrow and put the green arrow. And if we were to, in theory, sell around this point and buy around this point, sell the red and buy the green, uh, the last five years, that has been correct five out of five times, 100% strike rate and made about 38 cents. $380 per contract. Now remember, this is a spread that currently has risk of about five cents or $50 a day. So that's a pretty good, not only is it a perfect strike rate, it's a pretty good risk reward rate as well. Over the last 10 years, uh, you're looking at around the same profit um, and only one year, one loser, nine winners, nine out of 10 times. The last 15 years, 13 out of 15, which is 87%. It's made a bit more uh, over the last 15 years at 470. So again, you know, that's uh, a fantastic strike rate when looking at those averages, when digging deeper into that uh, seasonal data, as they call it, digging deeper into that historical data uh, and looking at that volatility as well. You've got a great looking risk reward, uh, but you've also got um, a terrific strike rate as well. Now, as always, the past does not equal the future. You know, next year, it could be the first loser in six years, for sure, absolutely. But uh, we don't, we can't really read the future. We can't analyze the future as much as we can the past. So we have to go off the past to give us uh, a degree of reasonable patterns. You have to say that that's pretty consistent. So uh, they, it's it's it can be quite good data to essentially build a strategy around. So let's have a look at another spread. Now I said. I said we were going to have a look at complex spreads, right? Now, the whole idea of a condo, if you are an options trader, I have traded options, you'd know what I'm talking about when it comes to condors and butterflies. Essentially, those two strategies are spreads, are two spreads combined. All right, so it's the same thing with futures. There are some similarities. There are some differences with options and futures. Uh, we won't get into options now, but... Uh, 
in this example, I'll show you an example of a condor. So in the last trade, we looked at May versus June, right? We looked at May versus June as in selling May, buying June. It's a nice looking bear spread. Let me go back to the chart there. It's a nice looking bear spread that's been profitable 13 out of 15 years, blah, 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 right? Uh, let's add an extra spread to that to create a condor. Now to do that, it's essentially a condor is a combination of a bear spread and a bull spread. You can see where I've marked the red and green arrows here, which shows you the position we would be trading. Uh, in this instance, uh, we take our bear spread May, June, and we'd add a bull spread in July, August. Okay, so being short May, long June, long July, short August. If that's confusing, it is at first. As I said though, the maths behind spread trading is no more complex than pluses and minuses but occasionally you go, yeah, yeah. But a little bit of practice gets you over the line with that one. It's not that complex. Uh, but I've gone ahead and done the uh, background stats for this condor spread as I did the bear spread. And it's kind of interesting. I'll show you some interesting stats here. So you can see here's the, this black line here shows the current condor spread, the, the value of that spread price. Just like you can in the underlying contract, you can buy this condor or sell this condor, okay, uh, and hope to profit from the change in the net prices of those four contracts. Now, what generally happens when you add more futures contracts, you may think it gets more complex, but it also gets less risky. You also start hedging out you also start offsetting your risk in trades just like let's say we were going short may just by itself we've already established that our risk in terms of a uh, average true range is about sixteen hundred dollars a day if we were to add the long june contract to creating a bear spread we still have a bearish outlook on the market but we've cut back our risk uh, by a factor of one on 32 all right, one on 32. Remember, we looked at a $1,600 risk in the outright and a $50 a fifty a day risk in the spread. Okay, so uh, that spread itself cuts out a lot of risk. Now, what do you think you do if you have a bear spread and then add a bull spread behind it? Well, that cuts out your risk even more. Okay, so these type of trades tend not to be the type of things scalpers do. It tend to be more... Uh, get in at the right price, sit and hold and wait for the spread to start doing its thing. Now, this is really interesting, I think, because you can see this chart, uh, which again shows the um, current value of the spread, in this case, the Condor, but it also shows the historical pattern over the last five and 15 years for that spread, how it's behaved last year and backwards and backwards, backwards. Okay, so what's really interesting here check this out the last five years strike rate has been 100 percent last 10 years 100 percent last 15 years 100 percent stroke 15 years 15 trades and they've been profitable each time this assumes that you're buying with a little green arrow is uh buying now and selling around this time in the in the early uh of next year early parts of next year okay so uh, you can also see what's interesting here when we talk about risk. Okay, so let's go back here. We're looking at risk here or potential reward or historical performance of this particular strategy of around say 400 bucks for the bear spread. If we look at if we look at the same data for the condor, it's about half that. Funny that, hey, half that. You add an extra spread and you halve your potential. Uh, but you increase your strike rate. Uh, that's kind of interesting, I think. So again, this type of strategy, while you think at first, oh, oh butterflies, condors, oh, they're way too complex. All they're essentially doing is cutting down on your risk and allowing you to either trade more, tr trade a wider range of different strategies, uh, or, um, uh, or just trade with a smaller account. You know, dip your toe in the water, if you like. Uh, these aren't necessarily the spreads you should be trading if you've never traded before, but they're certainly something that are worth, I mean, I think I've demonstrated here that it's worth learning about because we, we can get that consistency and we can get that 
more controllable risk than trading outrights. Uh, so uh, let me sum up here. We've uh, been I've been rambling on for a little bit now, but let me sum up. We covered futures versus CFDs. CFDs are very binary. It's either up or down. Futures can be binary too. You can just buy futures contract, sell a futures contract. Uh, but once you start getting into the more deeper styles of strategies, essentially futures spreads, uh, you can find that you can start tailoring what you want to risk. Uh, you can start defining your consistency of research a whole lot better. All right, so we looked at that simple, those simple futures spreads, the bull and bears, and then we said, right, well, if we put those two together, we have a thing called a condor. Uh, we've got another video here around somewhere talking about butterflies. There's a podcast there on butterflies as well. So uh, that's a similar thing to a condor. The only difference is what expiries you select. Okay. Uh, so all in all, uh, a lot of this stuff is covered in my advanced spread trading course on masterclasstrader.com. We go into a whole lot of deeper things in the course too. Things like um, uh, how we go about getting fills, how we build these spreads, why we build these spreads. We dig deeper into the research tools, uh, how we go about getting in and out of the market and particularly managing risk, managing your portfolio at risk, that type of stuff. That's all covered in the advanced spread trading course. But I do want to get across the point that it's not advanced in terms of the complexity. It's just advanced in the terms of your knowledge, you know, taking your knowledge forward and saying, right, well, I've been disillusioned with that, um, that whole idea of uh, going long, seeing the market hit my stop, and then only see it again, turn around and keep going up. Uh, if you've had that happen to you, then it might be time to start looking at some more deeper strategies that we cover in the events spread trading course. If you go to masterclasstrader.com, uh, there should be a link along the top that says specials. And that'll get you, um, currently there's a special there for 20% off uh, or 40% off depending on what package you buy. So it's pretty good, a pretty good deal. Check that out, masterclasstrader.com and click on the specials link. And that's about it for now. Happy trading and good luck out there. You've reached the end of another episode of the Trading with GB podcast. Thanks for listening and see you at the next episode.